Hello guys, I'm back. Today I will teach you how to set a flash separator on Aspen Plus. But not only that, I will teach you how to think as a real chemical process engineer in plant design when we are dealing with a flash separator. My name is Jefferson Costa and I teach you how to work with chemical process engineering and plant design. To be able to add and set a flash separator on Aspen Plus as a real chemical process engineer, first you need to understand what is a flash separation. And just to simplify, what is a flash separation? Flash separation is when you have a fluid that passes through a device that breaks the pressure and it forms two phases. So, for instance, if I have a stream here that is at a high pressure, upstream of the control valve when i pass through the control valve the control valve is responsible for adding the pressure drop to the fluid and downstream of the control valve i have a lower pressure depending on the conditions of temperature and pressure this fluid can form at two phases so i will have liquid and vapor on this uh, separator and this is called the flash separator because the separation is the result of the reduction of pressure of a stream. And where flash separation is used in real life. So the TEG process used for the dehydration of natural gas is a classical example of the use of a flash separator. So you can see here a flash separator and we have the natural gas, wet natural gas, go into a scrubber to remove the free water that can come with the gas. The wetted gas enters in the absorber column, also known as contactor column, and the lean TG or the TG without impurities or with very high purity enters in the top of the column and goes to the bottom, removing the water that is in the natural gas. So when it comes to the bottom of the contactor, the TG is known as rich TG because it is rich in the impurities. So to remove the impurities not desired in, the, in this process, because when I use the TG, it also it, it removes the water from the natural gas, but also some hydrocarbons. And I don't want to send the hydrocarbons to my regenerator, co regenerator column because it will be bigger and because eventually I can uh, recover these hydrocarbons to be used for uh, fuel or to recirculate or whatever. So the use of the flash, flash vessel or to the flash tank is here because between the absorber that operates at the high pressure and the flash tank, I have here a control valve that is not shown in this process flow diagram, but I have a control valve that is responsible for breaking the pressure from the high pressure to the low pressure. And with this breaking pressure, I will have the separation between the solvent and the gases dissolved in the solvent. With this, I will able to recover recovering my hydrocarbon vapors. But something to, to observe and that is very important in real life is that between the flash vessel and the regenerator I have a pressure drop. I have a pressure drop because of the pipes, I have a pressure drop because of manual valves, I have a pressure drop because equipments that are installed between these, these two equipments. For instance I have a filter to remove any part, solid particles from the TEG, I have the heat exchanger to do the preheating of the TEG that goes to the regenerator. And in the description here, all these pressure drops is uh, informed as 30 psi. So I need to know this information because based on the operating pressure of the contact of the regenerator. I need to sum up the pressure drop to know what is the operating pressure of my flash vessel. So this is the way that a real chemical process engineer evaluates a process flow diagram and also the, pro the process description. So here I have the amount of natural gas at a uh, designed uh, specific pressure and temperature 
and we need to do the recovery of hydrocarbons considering this pressure drop. So our final uh, interest is to know how is the composition of the gas recovered and also what is the flow. So to start your process simulation on Aspen Plus, you need to do three steps. Here in this slide, you can see the step one is select a template, step two, select the components, and step three, select the proper method. Don't worry, I will open the Aspen Plus right now. This is a presentation that I'm using to show you how to do that. And if you want to download this presentation, you just need to verify the link to my Telegram channel in process Jefferson Costa because I will let the PDF file of this presentation there for free. You can download for free in my Telegroup, Telegram channel. So here we are in the Aspen Plus and as I mentioned to you to start a process simulation on Aspen Plus you need to open a new file or open a new simulation. In this case I already opened the simulation you need to add the components so all the components used in this simulation are here and you need to select the proper method so in this case i am using the sr dash polar so with this you we you prepare the components and the all the properties of the components that must be used during the aspen, uh, aspen plus calculations to move from the properties to the simulation, we just need to click in simulation. And here I already have my absorber and I have the material streams related to the lean tag and also the wet gas. If you need to add the absorber to your process simulation, you just need to click in columns. So in columns, you can find the one that best fits your needs. Remind, just to remind you, our purpose here is to add and set a flash separator, not to add and set absorber. So to add and set the flash separator, I need to go to separators. So I have different kinds of separators here. So the flash tool is used when I need to split or when I need to separate vapor and liquids. Flash 3 is used when I need a uh, rigorous mode to separate vapor, liquids with high density and liquid with low density. And I have also the decanter where the main purpose is just to separate two liquid phases. I will not uh, separate vapor in this case. And the SEP and SEP2. I use it to separate the components based on the user's desire. So here, where as I am considering the separation of the solvent and the gases, so I will to I want to separate just two phases, vapor and liquid. I will use the flash two. So I just need to click one time in the icon and I click in my main flow sheet so in this case I added the flash vessel I click on ask to to go out from the adding modes I can uh, arrange the my equipment in my main flow sheet so if I click on this button I can centralize and now I will add the nomenclature or the identification of the vessel so in this case I will use vessel and I need now to add the material streams the stream corresponding to the vapor phase and also the stream corresponding to the liquid phase to do that I just need to click in material and now I can add the vapor phase in my vessel separator and you can see that at the top will be always the vapor phase and in the bottom will be always the liquid phase. And I have two options here. If I am interested in removing free water, I use this blue arrow here, but it's not the case. I want to remove the liquid. So what I will do is add the liquid and let's do a zoom out. So based on that, I have my two streams that I can uh, change the nomenclature. If I just click two times in the in the box, I can add here, for instance, 
vapor and in the bottom I can identify as liquid. And now I need to connect my feed stream to my vessel. So I will click one time in this stream. It will allow me to use here reconnect. So I will click one time in reconnect and I will choose destination. Because based on that, I will be able to connect the inlet of my flash vessel. So with this, I connected, I added my flash vessel to the process simulation. And now I need to proceed with my specification, my settings to the vessel separator. How I do that? How can I do that? Each one of these equipments represents a block to the process simulation on Aspen Plus. So I can go to the folder blocks. If I open here, it will appear to me the observer and it will appear to me the vessel. So if I open again the submenu, I click on inputs and here I can specify my flash separator. So what is the what is happening here? First, I have the pressure inside my vessel because based on the barometric pressure plus the pressure drop, I have the inlet pressure. There is no mention for the barometric pressure in the pro problem description, but let's assume that it is at sea level, and if it is sea level, I had 14.7 psi. A. So 14.7 plus 30 psi, I have 44.7. So this is the pressure at the inlet of my vessel separator. And as it is a flash separation, I will not set the temperature because I don't know what will happen with the temperature. But I know that the dirty as a flash separation is zero because I'm considering a adiabatic depressurization. Adiabatic depressurization means that I don't have heat exchanging with the environment. So in this case, the dirty will be zero. With that, I have all the settings that I need to my flash vessel. You can see that the input changed now is in yellow. I can click on next to verify if there is any missing information that I must feed or fill in the process simulation. That's not the case. I will run the process simulation. Process simulation converted. You can verify this because there is no errors or warnings were issued during simulation. So it means that everything is okay in the process simulation. So Returning here to my process uh, main flow sheet, uh, there are different ways to show the results. So one of the ways to show the results is to click in the information that is available here. So stream results. So uh, if I want to verify what are the temperature profile in all of, of those streams, I can click on temperature. So here, I can verify what is the temperature for each one of these streams. And when I did that, there is a, a table here with a nomenclature or a legend showing what is the meaning of the symbols that appears here. If I want to know the pressure, I click here in pressure. So now I can verify what is the pressure in each one of these Location. So verify that uh, upstream of the vessel I have 500 psi, and now in the vessel I have 44.7 psi that is rounding up to 45. In the Aspen Plus, it's not mandatory or it's not required to add a pressure drop device between one stream and another to reduce the or to change the pressure of the fluid. The Aspen High Seas no, we always need to add a pressure drop. The Aspen Plus will consider the inputs added in the equipment to do all the calculations. Another to verify the, the mass flow rate, I just need to click here. So mass flow rate, now I have the flow rate in each stream. So you can verify that using these proper methods, the amount of flow 
that is released from the liquid is very small. In any case, we had some kind of separation. And to verify what is the composition of the vapor phase, I just need to go to uh, stream results. I can verify this here. And in, when I do that, all the material streams connected to my vessel will be shown here. So I have the rich EG going in, I have the vapor going out and liquid going out. And when I go to small fractions, I can see that I have going into my vessel separator. For instance, here I have 0.2% of methane. And now I have the liquids minus than 0.2%, but in the vapor I have 73.4% of methane. In the vapor stream now I have 15.4% of ethane, and the rich TG it was less than 0.5%. So with this I can verify what is the composition of my vapor phase. Another way to verify what is the composition of the vapor phase is going instead of in the vessel, I can go to the material streams. So here I have the list of the all the streams. So if I click in vapor, I can verify results. And now I will just verify the vapor as a standard. But if I want to compare, I can, for instance, add more streams here to the submenu. So going down, I go to mol fraction and I can verify the same result because these are the same information shown in different locations. If you want to replicate what was done here in this video on Aspen Plus, you can download this presentation from my Telegram channel in process Jefferson Costa. So here we have all the information that is required to you do this process simulation with the results where you can compare your results with what I have done in this presentation. But if you need to learn the Aspen Plus step by step as a real chemical process engineer, I invite you to join my Learn Aspen Plus in 12 hours because this is the, my training course where I teach students how to use the Aspen Plus. If you want to know more about flash separation, I recommend you this literature here, but also the video that will appear in your screen right now.